Rise, Son of Rome Originally starting its life as a connect only title, Rise was eventually rebuilt as a third person hack and slasher. Though the combat is simple and the story is surprisingly short, there is a lot to love about this modern spin on the legend of the Sword of Damocles. Mainly, the graphics. I don't think the graphics for this game can be overstated. This game came out in 2013 and yes, I understand it is a first party Microsoft Studios title, but still. Look at this. Remember this game today is about a month away from being 10 years old. That's a decade, a full decade. And this is what it looked like back then. Now I think it is becoming more and more common, but the rendered in-game graphics actually look better than the cinematic cutscenes. From memory though, in 2013, this was definitely not the norm. Personally, I think the story is actually very interesting, and I feel like there is a lot here that could be expanded on. There is a whole world that can be built upon this game, but unfortunately, I don't think Crytek is looking to expand on it. Moving on, there is a downside though, the combat. Fighting in Rise is definitely simple and can get pretty repetitive, but the spectacle of each execution is still entertaining to watch. The problem I found though isn't the simplicity of the fighting, but rather that some parts can get really frustrating. And I don't mean it just gets boring. This is my second playthrough of this game, and on legendary difficulty there are sections that are super annoying. I'm pretty heavily upgraded and pretty close to maxed out, but here for example my men die way too quick. The aiming controls on both controller and mouse and keyboard are frustrating to use because you have to charge up. The archers also stagger you and break your timing so you have to restart aiming each time and that's not the end of it. Here's me trying to pick up more spears and even when the prompt is up and I'm pressing it, it just shows you bashing your shield instead like... Like I know I'm not that good, but that's okay. Usually. But here, I actually had to YouTube some help and basically cheesed it to get through. There's also some issues with the animation lock, like trying to roll doesn't always work if you've committed to an attack. I mean older games don't have that option and I get it, but newer games shouldn't really have this issue in my opinion. Maybe I am just bad though. Now going back, I still think it is a shame the story campaign isn't longer, but the repetitive combat can definitely start to wear you down after a while. There are little changes throughout that help to break it up, but there isn't nearly enough depth or variety to it. I also don't remember feeling any difference in the upgrades. When playing through Rise, you can definitely see the VR influence in the gameplay that has carried over. And being a VR title, it really manages to showcase the tech that's possible in the Xbox One and being on PC, you really get to push it to its limits. I originally played this on a 1070 and it definitely still holds up. Having said that, it's a shame there's no photo mode. Like personally, I wouldn't use it anyway and being an older game, I wouldn't expect one now, but there are probably mods out there that could help. Virtual photography is also very much a fledgling community, but I feel this game could fit right in. The art style in this game is also just gorgeous. This cutscene in particular really just shows off how it isn't all about the flashy and shiny graphics, but proper art can really add to the personality of a game. Another part of the game I feel is worth mentioning is the music. Look, it's not Halo level iconic, but how many games are? The score for this game is still pretty epic. It fits in so well when paired with the historical drama and the magnificent cutscenes. Like, this is the opening cutscene. And here, like it's trying to tell its own story. this awesome fight. And speaking of cutscenes, the voice acting in this game is just top notch. I mean, check this out. Chieftain Commodus was traded to the Horned King in the Northern Lands. Beyond the wall. Please. Release my daughter. I beg of you. And here's another. I fought with your father. If it's blood you want, I promise I will give you as much as you can handle. You were the second, aren't you? Yes, sir. Not anymore. 
Welcome to the 14th, lad. Look, the accents probably aren't quite right, and historically, it's really just borrowing and referencing a few cool elements from the Roman age. I mean, I'm no history expert, but like, the names Nero, Commodus, and Boudicca were all real people. But I'm pretty sure things just didn't play out the way they did in the game. The whole vengeance plot is also a modern spin on the legend of the Sword of Damocles, and personally, I like it a lot. You can also bet there's some elements taken from the award-winning film Gladiator. Don't get me wrong, this isn't one of those games with a crazy engaging and deep story, but I do think it's still worth playing through. For all its faults, it's very much a game about spectacle. Like, look at these executions. It's just cool. It's like that slow motion scene from 300. To me, this is one of those titles that fits right in amongst the Darksiders era of hack and slashes, those video game as video games. Look, if you're a more story focused gamer and aren't too fussed on simple gameplay and fighting mechanics and manage your expectations, I do recommend this game in 2023. If you've managed to sit through this whole video, thank you so much for watching. I'm still looking to upload a brand new video once a fortnight, but be sure to let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments. Thanks again for watching, hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.